Impress animations. Anytime I teach multimedia, whether it's with PowerPoint, Impress, or something else, everyone always gets excited when we talk about animations. This is probably because up till now, everything you've created is pretty much sat still on the slide. There's been no movement. Now we're going to learn how to orchestrate some movement in your slide. Now, rather than showing you the practice project and simply have you duplicate it exactly as you see in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how I build the slide that you just saw with your instructor. Then I'll release you to create an animation in your practice project of your own. One of your own creation, not just duplicating what you see here. So first I'm going to create a new slide. Then I'll go up here and I'll add the title, Libra Office Impress. Now down here in the text, I'm gonna get rid of this bullet point center it and type the word animations on the next line i'm going to write what can you do with animations now i'm going to highlight the word animations and i'm going to change it to yellow because i want to make it pop out on the screen now i'm ready to animate it over to your right in the task pane there is a category called custom animation Let's expand that. Now you can't choose anything here or click on anything unless you've got this selected. So right now the add button is grayed out and I have no way of clicking it. But if I go over here and select the word animations, now I can click the add button. So let's click it and then that'll bring up the custom animations menu box. Now the first thing that should pop out is that there are five tabs up at the top. There's an entrance tab, an emphasis tab, exit, motion paths, and miscellaneous effects. Each of these is a warehouse of things you can choose. Now if you look down at the bottom there's a box that says automatic preview and it's checked. As long as this is checked whenever you have something highlighted it will show you what it looks like on the screen. If you uncheck it, it's not going to show it to you. I like to keep it checked because I like to know exactly what I'm going to select. So I'm going to go ahead and just select a few of these so that we can see what they do. Here's a box. That wasn't too exciting. Checkerboard. Circle. Eh, a little better. How about Venetian blinds? It's just like blinds going down. How about flying? Well, that's a little better, but I don't want it to come up through the text from the bottom like that. Those are all nice, but somewhat blah. There's a reason for that, though. These are all in the category basic. If you scroll down, you'll find another category called exciting. And these pop out a little bit better on your slide. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to choose bounce because I like that effect. There, that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to click OK. Now notice that what I've chosen as an animation shows over here in the animation order window. The word animations, which is what I have animated, it shows up. Now if you look above, you'll see some things that didn't show up before. It's called effect bounce. These are things specific to the animation effect that I chose. If you look under the word start here, it's set to on click. These are conditions that will cause the animation to start. For example, on click makes it start when you click the button. There are other selections here with previous, which means it'll start at the same time as the previous animation if there were more down here in the animation menu order or after previous, which means it'll start after the last one has done. Right now we want to go ahead and choose on click. Now I want to show you how I dealt the deck of cards using animations, but first we'll need some room, so I'm going to decrease the size of this placeholder here like so. There. Now let's go into the images folders 
where we've got everything in the student media file. And you'll notice I have a bunch of card files. Let's go ahead and just select all these card pictures and drag them out onto the screen. There. Now they're all out onto the screen and they're stacked on top of one another. But now I'm going to have to resize them. They're just a little bit too big. I'm going to resize them all to be smaller and the same size. So let's click on this little drag, this resize handle and make it look about like that. Now I'm going to drag it over here to the right. And I'm going to click on the next one, resize it a little bit, drag it on top of the other one. Doesn't quite match, but that's okay. I can change the size of it like so to match it. Now I'll show you a little trick. If you just simply drag it on so that the corners line up like so, it's easier to resize it. There. Now they're all resized and they're all stacked over to the right. But I want them on the left. You can drag select all of them like so and just move them at once. This is the starting position for my animations. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these cards like this. And then I'm going to make one animation that will apply to all of them. So I'm going to click on the Add button now that they're all selected. I'm going to go to Motion Paths and do Curve. Now, Curve allows me to draw a straight line to get my altitude while holding the left mouse button and then let go to draw my curve which will position it when I double click. I'll show you. I'll click OK. I'll hold the left mouse button down. Now let's bring it down here. Double click and that sets it in stone. So now when I play this animation it's going to bounce and then it's going to bring the cards over. All of them are going in the same place. Now that's not what we want ultimately. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to bring each one of these individually. So what we'll do is we'll select a card and double click on the arrow. That will allow me to reposition this arrow somewhere else. Now we don't want these cards to overlap so I'll move it over there. Very good. Now we'll select this one, grab another one, move it over even more. Then click, drag, Move it over even more. Now we got one, two, three, four. We have one more card. For this one, we'll just click, drag it over here. Now we have all of them. And if we click the slideshow and start it, here comes the first card. All of them move out at once. Now, we really want them all to go after each one of them. So we want them to come out one by one. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on bitmap 5, this last one, and it's going to start after the previous and do the same thing with each one of these. That changes the condition of when the animation shows so that it starts after the previous animation. And we'll do that for all of them. And then we'll go ahead and start our slideshow again and look at it. So there's the animation word, and there comes each of them out like that. Now, what I think would look even better is if we added a spin to each one of these. So let's go ahead and select all of them again, like so, and then we'll do Add, and then we'll go ahead and click Spin, which is under Emphasis. There's Spin. Click OK. And now we've got another set of bitmaps over here. If you look at each one of these, you have the ability to choose the rotation. But rather than changing this, because I, I think I'm going to leave it at 360, um, you could, by the way, change it to quarter spin, half spin, or two spins, and then change it to counterclockwise if you wanted. I'm not going to fool with that. I am going to change the speed, though, to very fast. And then I'm going to change each one of these to be with previous. With previous, with previous, with previous. Oops, that one's on click. We don't want that. We want it with previous. And now we'll go ahead and start the slideshow and see what happens. Okay, now we have to rearrange the order. Bitmap 1 
needs to spin at the same time that bitmap one is tossed out onto the table. So let's click this to move it up. There we go. And now bitmap one is going to start with the previous, which is this bitmap one up here. And we'll do this for each one. There. Now let's go ahead and play the animation. By the way, I changed each one of these to just fast because very fast was too fast. And I'm going to go up to slideshow and play it. There's the bouncing animations. And voila, each one of them is spinning as it places the card. Awesome. All right, so now it's your turn to try this on your practice project. Raise your hand if you have any questions.